So next up, we're going to talk about how to prepare your body to make it perform better, more race worthy, uh, more durable, more uh, crash resistant and handle the rails better. So first off, you want to check with the club you're running at um, and just see what is allowed per what class, uh, certain classes, for example, box stock, um, there may not be allowed a lot of modifications allowed to the body. Um, but as you go higher up in class, stock or super stock, uh, you can do more of these things. So one of the first things you want to do is look at the rear wing. So if you look at the um, stock rear wing on the car, it's uh, it looks pretty, um, adds some weight, but is not very aerodynamic and not super functional in terms of actually providing uh, much downforce uh, to the car. Um, the Joe Marino wing actually does something actually is uh, fairly aerodynamic, uh, but if you want to get the best performance, you want to look towards an aftermarket wing, a Lexan wing, and which is much uh, bigger and provides more downforce. Uh, the wing will provide more stability, uh, downforce both to keep your rear end planted and directional stability um, at high speed. The next thing uh, you're going to look at is uh, replacing the windshield if that's allowed. So most of the stock windshields are made of uh, molded, fairly thick, hard, rigid plastic, uh, which is fairly heavy and is you know high up in the car, which you know increases raises the center of gravity and can make your car more prone to traction roll. So to combat that, you can get a Lexan uh, windshield. Um, could be a drop-in replacement for the molded windshield, so much lighter. Um, and even going further, you can get some cars, um, an entire Lexan roof. So the entire roof is cut out and the top portion is Lexan as well. So if you want to be com competitive, especially at um, some of the classes, this is almost a necessity in order to get the body CG uh, down low enough. Um, Ways to attach the windshield, um, you can use uh, various glues. Um, the lightest option is, is to go around with a soldering iron, uh, melt the perimeter of the windshield into the car. Uh, not super pretty, but it is uh, very light. Um, so as we were talking about glues, um, what glue to use on your car? Um, so a lot of people use sauna acrylates or polystyrene, model cement, or like 5 mini epoxy. Uh, so what I recommend um, pretty much for anything on the body is to use this um, welder glue. It is like Shugu or E6000, but uh, runnier, thinner in viscosity. And this has several advantages. It, first of all, it does not really uh, break. It's uh, fairly flexible. So when something hits, it won't crack or break off and has some give to it. Uh, second is, it is actually removable with some force. Um, for instance, I could go ahead and um, pry these body clips off and reposition them and clean the glue off, peel the glue off if I need to and reposition them. So that's also a great advantage. If you use like CA and it cracks, it's really hard to repair. Uh, it won't stick uh, again, um, but this welder's glue is like the best. I think the only caveat here is that it, um, it will fog um, some of the clear Kyosho plastics, so like headlight lenses, um, things like that. Um, but everywhere else, uh, I use it for everything. Okay, so towards the end of your body build, you're going to need to glue on the body clips. Um, so basically, on the inside here, the body clips, um, the height of them when they're glued in will set how the body sits on the car, a million terms of the back of the body relative to the chassis and the rear wheels, uh, depending on what chassis you're running, um, whether it's an aftermarket chassis or a more stock MR03, um, your body's gonna need to sit at a different height um, for that chassis. Uh, so the best way to figure that out is to temporarily um, take the body clips and tack them in place, say with a very small amount of glue or double-sided, um, say, tire tape or servo tape just to temporarily position them. 
put them on your chassis, uh, check the heights correct uh, before you fully glue them in. Um, so considerations on the height, right, just making sure that the, the rear body is not rubbing the track, uh, there's enough clearance for the rear wheels to uh, move up and down and pivot. Um, and for instance, if you're using the super thick uh, rear marker radial tires, uh, they need additional clearance. So the rear of your body needs to be, uh, be a bit even higher even. Um, and the other advantage, um, as I mentioned, if you use the welder glue, you can glue your body clips in. And if they're not correct, you can go ahead and pry them off, clean off the glue, and glue them on again at a different height. Um, I've kind of settled on figuring out um, you know, the, the height and then using a, a thin sheet of uh, a plastic uh, shim at the correct thickness, this orange piece right here, and that kind of sets the height. Um, so if you do find a height and for a body that works with your chassis and you can find a, a thin shim there, that makes it easier and you just place that shim there when you glue it and I'll set the height correctly. Now the front of the car, um, for the most part, you'll be using the stock body uh, front kind of clip uh, holder position. Um, so really not much to change there. So the way to adjust the front of the car, um, so if you start with a, say, stock Kyosho body clip, uh, like this guy, this doesn't really allow you to adjust the height of the front of the body. Um, it's at a single fixed height. So this will work on some cars, once again, depending on the chassis and your front right height, uh, things like that. So it, it can work. Um, but if you do need to lift it, um, you usually need to lift it up higher. Uh, you need to get an aftermarket mount. Um, so several options there. Um, so this guy here is pretty popular. So this is the PN mount. It consists of an aluminum uh, base and then a separate carbon piece that's body specific that you buy and um, bolt on. And you can add um, spacers basically in between the carbon to lift the body to the correct height um, as you need. So that's a pretty popular option and you can get you know carbon pieces for um, most of the popular bodies. Um, there's other options uh, for instance this guy this is the the reflex uh, Joe Marima mount um, and it's also nice it comes with this giant front uh, reinforcement um, to you know reinforce the bottom the front uh, bumper of the body so it doesn't break. Uh, that's another option. Next we're going to talk about physical modifications that you want to do to your body to improve say handling, durability, performance. Uh, so the first thing you want to look at, uh, some of the Kyoshi bodies have a we have a front splitter uh, which protrudes a fair amount off the front and if you have that and you hit a rail Basically, the, the splitter is going to dig in there or even get caught underneath, um, so it's going to you know, hang up on the rail. So what you want to do is go ahead and uh, trim that guy back, um, flush with the rest of the contour of the front of the body, and that way there's nothing sticking out to catch. And so when your body goes to hit the rail, it'll just glide off smoothly and there's nothing um, underneath to catch. Um, depending on, you know, your wheel offsets and tire clearances, you may need to trim the wheel arches a bit, uh, maybe front, uh, front and back of the wheels or on the top and to have enough clearance for the offset wheels and tires that you're running. And you may need to do that in both the front and back, um, and, you know, make sure there's enough clearance for suspension, uh, wheel travel. Uh, tire clearance as well. Um, so if you're putting together your body and you know the kit comes with canard, front canards or side mirrors or things, you, uh, anything on the side of the body, you wouldn't want to omit, omit those, not put them on. Um, they either get snagged on the rails or break off likely in collisions, so don't put those on. Um, trimming the rear bumper, so again depending on the body, uh, most of the Kyosha bodies may have this, you know, rear bumper uh, diffuser section um, and you're going to want to relieve that uh, just to provide airflow at the rear of the car. 
So, you know, once again, depending on what your club allows, um, if you cut that away, it provides better airflow out here. So there's no sort of parachute effect, um, which can, you know, provide lift on the rear. Um, similarly, uh, if, if you're allowed to, you can actually cut out um, portions of the body to provide uh, venting on the rear. Um, I don't have examples, but um, here's some photos of some possibilities that you can do. So there's, uh, you know, similar to relieving the bumper, uh, just opening up the rear provides uh, airflow so there's no uh, less lift produced in the rear of the body. Next uh, thing you're going to want to look at is, you know, if your body is prone, is uh, thin in areas or prone to breakage or fragile, um, adding some reinforcements. And this is going to be highly you know, body dependent as well. Um, this McLaren, which I've run for several years and over the many years have, you know, figured out where it cracks uh, just through many, many collisions um, and have reinforced all those areas. Um, so. Some examples here are this, you know, 3D printed um, front bumper reinforcement, uh, 3D printed, you know, gusset pieces here against the body clips uh, for this portion of the wheel arch. Um, this is a, you know, piece of Lexan sheet which is glued on to reinforce this uh, body side, which cracks when hits. Um, it's actually nylon cloth, uh, almost like fiberglass, glued on here to these wheel arches. Um, those also split when, um, when hit and another 3D printed uh, bumper reinforcement here uh, to reinforce the back uh, where it gets hit. So, you know, all those things help to strengthen the body if it's fragile. Um, when you're putting together your body, um, you're going to want to add the headlights. Um, don't forget those, definitely the, the lenses. Um, you can skip the buckets, don't really do anything functionally, but the headlights um, if you have an open hole for the headlights, then the air is going to actually flow through there and can actually cause a bit of extra lift in the front. Um, so you do want to put the headlights uh, in, lenses in, and you know, similarly to that, you know, if you have a large, uh, you know, 3D reinforcement in the front, that can also provide some aerodynamic advantage as well and reduce lift in the front. So the next thing we're going to talk about is how to keep your body secured onto the chassis during a race and to prevent it from being popped off or lifted, which can of course affect your race. So the first thing you want to do when you go to mount your body, of course, is to make sure you get in there correctly. So the front nose clip is in the right position in the body clip and your side clips are correctly mounted on the sides of the chassis so that your body is at the correct height front and rear nothing's dragging nothing's lifted so when you go and start your race uh, your body's not off which can of course cause handling problems or delay the race if you need to go and fix your body which is annoying now even if you did this correctly there's going to be some chance of you getting hit by someone of you hitting someone, of you hitting a rail, and your body uh, slightly being popped off. So symptoms could be, you know, one side of the rear of the body being popped off, uh, both sides being popped off, and, you know, of course the worst is a full, you know, decapitation where the body's off and you're just like... <laughs> Any of those will cost you time. You know, if you're lucky, you can drive over to a marshal who can, you know, quickly tuck your body in and fix it. Uh, if you're unlucky, then, you know, it's going to take a lot more time to get your body on, especially if it's off, and you can be down, lose, you know, half lap to a lap or more, just trying to get your body fixed. So, ways to keep your body on. The first one, which is probably the most secure, is to use some tape. Um, so the what I recommend is this you know, glossy finish scotch tape. Uh, this seems to work the best. Uh, you don't want to use uh, the magic invisible disappearing kind. This tends to be a little bit more uh, brittle and can tear, uh, whereas the glossy stuff uh, will stretch um, before tearing and won't break. So all you have to do is take your car, uh, take a good length of scotch tape, Go ahead and 
bum bum, make sure it's down, and go ahead and make sure it's adhered to both sides well. Just rub it down, rub down the bottom sides of the body. So when you do this, things to watch out for are, first of all, make sure that the tape is not uh, rubbing on any moving parts. For instance, the uh, T-plate, the motor pod, depending on the chassis, of course, you know, it's gonna look a little different. Uh, side links, anything that's moving. You don't want the tape to, you know, touch moving parts and it could strangely affect your handling. The other thing is to make sure that the tape is really flat across the bottom. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's happened a few times to me where it's not well adhered and the tape can be lifted and then end up, you know, this lifted portion of tape drags on the RCP, causing it to act strangely and, you know, like drag brake and like, like car is going to be acting a little weird with, you know, dragging tape. Um, but other than that, tape works really well, very secure. Of course, it's annoying and you have to uh, take it on and off for every, every round. Uh, it takes time, of course. Um, I tend to not usually put it on during, you know, practice, but only during, you know, actual race heats um, when it counts to keep the body on. The other way uh, which can you know help to secure a body is to use uh, some of this stuff. Uh, this is poster putty. There's various brands, different colors. This is a you know, tacky putty-like compound. Uh, so take a little ball of this stuff. You put it on your body uh, clips on the body or on the chassis. Uh, this will you know, provide some tackiness to the body to the chassis and also take up any gap. And so when it gets hit, the putty will help to it, you know, adhere the body onto the chassis and keep it from popping off as much. Um, so this can work, it definitely helps. Uh, maybe not quite as secure as tape. I think if you do hit a, get a hard enough hit that the body can, you know, still come off. Um, and then the last uh, method to look at would be using body posts. So these are Lexan body mounting posts, uh, depending, of course, on your chassis. There's various um, configurations of this. So we'd use the rear Lexan body post uh, mounts, and then um, this car doesn't have it, but the normal front hard plastic body mounting clip. And you would take your, your hard, bo hard body and drill holes for the body posts and just use, uh, you know, the the body, you know, the removable body clips here um, to keep the body on the posts. So this also works pretty well in the secure. Uh, your body does have to have, you know, room for the post to come through. So like this McLaren, um, can, holes can be on the side here and there's room for it. Um, the Joe Marima, kind of unfortunately, um, the windshield's really wide and big, so they're really in a good real estate for the body post to, to come through there. Um, but yeah, just depending on your particular body and your chassis, um, that's another option you could do. And there's another uh, look at that. Um, and then the last uh, tip maybe is if your body is uh, loose to begin with. So the McLarens tend to be a little loose. Um, you can go ahead and tighten that up. You wrap some tape around here, cinch it down, heat that gently with, say, a hairdryer or put it in a very low temp oven um, and then remove the tape. The heat will, you know, form the body a little bit tighter so it's snug, a little more snug on the chassis. Uh, so that will help, you know, keep it on there. Still not quite as secure as, you know, using tape or putty or some other means. All right, so last topic here is color. Uh, so if at all possible, you want to try to add some color to your car. Uh, if you have a sea of white bodies out there, very hard to distinguish, you know, someone else's car from yours. Uh, my daughter says she hates seeing just, you know, a sea of white bodies out there. It's like white car number one, white car number two, yellow car number one, yellow car number two. Very hard to tell. So. Um, adding color helps you distinguish um, your car on the track and can also be more visible than say just like a plain white white body. So if you're, you know, do something very simple, you could go and throw on some color tape. This is just a red electrical tape. 
took you know a couple minutes at most cut some pieces stick it on uh, looks decent um, you know get a little fancier with two colored electrical vinyl tape uh, so you know even that very simple a couple minutes um, looks a lot better than you know just a, a plain white body and help you to to distinguish your car now similarly you can use um, say like monocoat or airplane self stick trim um, stickers various kinds or other kinds of color tape um, definitely help the the body to stand out uh, so in terms of painting um, the hard bodies uh, several options you know first is the good old rattle cans um, you know, Tamiya TS um, specifically made for you know ABS plastic um, it has a glossy finish, so you don't need a top coat necessarily. Um, so you can use this directly on the plastic. Um, I often use the uh, Tamiya PS versions, and these are made for polycarbonate, um, but they still work fine on the uh, rigid ABS plastic. They do end up with a, a dull coat though, um, so you do need to top them with a, a clear coat of, say, the TS to keep them shiny. Um, there are more color options available in the PS uh, line than the TS, so you know that's why um, I've been using the PS um, for the most part. And when you're painting, uh, you know, general advice here is to go slow. Uh, several thin light coats so it can dry. Um, if you put on a thick, heavy coat, it's going to sag and drip and run. But very thin light coats, let them dry in between, and many, many coats. Um, and about it and the paint will come out better. Uh, do not try and dye your body. Um, these, the plastic has a fairly low like melting point so if you put in hot water it may distort or melt um, so don't do that. Um, and of course there's uh, various other kind of you know airbrush or um, other paints you can use uh, as well.